the time and dedication that went into this GIF file is unparalleled. I I don't know what to tell you. It's amazing. Okay. Hey, welcome back to the Mathnasium. We're providing math content for you on the daily during this incredible unprecedented year. Here we go with solving multi-step equations. Hang on tight. It's going to be a wild ride. All right. Um, we're going to look at like four scenarios of multi-step equations today, and then uh, we're going to kind of talk about the strategies for each one of those scenarios. The first of which is when you have like terms on the same side. And all you have to do in this is really just combine, combine like terms, and then you can solve like we did. And you should usually have a, a two-step equation there in most scenarios. So um, my like terms in this case, I'm going to go ahead and switch to green. Um, I'm going to be talking about the 5m and the 2m. Those are my like terms on this side of the equation. All right, so we have 5 equals, uh, five, equals 5 plus 2 is 7m minus 23. And now we're just to that regular old scenario for mathematics. Um, or for two-step equation. So I'm going to add 23 to both sides of the equation to undo subtraction by 23. And that'll give us 28 equals 7m. Now, um, to get m by itself, I am going to undo multiplication by 7 by using division by 7. So I'm going to divide by 7 over here, divide by 7 over here, and you will get 4, 28 divided by 7 is 4, 7 divided by 7 is 1, so 4 is equal to m, and m is equal to 4. Okay, super. You guys go ahead, give this one a try on your own, and you can check in just a minute. Let me extend the page so you can see what we got going on. All right, I'm going to work it through, so pause it if you want to try it by yourself. Adding these two together. Negative 2 plus 5 is 3y plus 5 equals 14. Want to get y by itself. Going to get rid of this constant first. 3y equals 9. Divide both sides by 3 to undo multiplication by 3. That's what we're multiplying y by. Which will give us y equals 3. Bingo. Remember, we can check our solution by substituting numbers back in. Is 5 equal to 4, or is 5 equal to, that would be, if you plug in 4, 20 minus 23 is, so that would be 20 minus 23 plus 8, 28 minus 3 is 5, so yes, we're good. You can do the same thing over here. Let's check out the next type. Uh, these are um, ones that involve the distributive property. Now there may be uh, some of these equations um, might be a combination of type 1 and type 2. So after you distribute, you may have to combine like terms before you begin solving. But the steps for solving an equation like this are you want to always distribute first if you can. Then you're going to combine like terms only if they're on the same side of the equation, right? Over here, these like terms are on the same side. Well, there are problems. The third type is when you have like terms on opposite sides that you need to combine. I have an x here and an x here. We can't just combine because they are separated by the equal sign. So please make sure you know where that equal sign is in the equation and whether or not it's separating them. That's going to make a big difference in your answer. Well, it's going to give you the wrong one if you don't, if you're not careful. Okay, negative 8, we're going to distribute. Negative 8 times 2, that's negative 16x. Negative 8 times negative 1, negative 5, negative is a positive 8. Could be an auctioneer. Negative, okay, equals 36. Subtract 8 from both sides, and you'll end up with negative 16x is equal to 36 minus 8 will give us 28, I believe. Um, to get uh, x by itself, then, we are going to divide 
by uh, 16, negative 16, sorry. 28 divided by negative 16. And negative 16's cancel, and you'll get x is equal to a positive divided by a negative is a negative, 28 over 16. Now that is not simplified. We need to make sure we write it in the simplest form. Divide them both by 4, which will give you 7 over 4. I'd rather not check that solution, but uh, I think it's going to work. I guess it's actually not too terribly bad. Yeah, okay. So you guys, go ahead, try that one, and uh, pause the video, try it, and then I'm going to go over it here in just a second. Okay, I'm assuming how you did this is distributed, like I said, three. Distribute first, then combine if there are terms there. So it'll be 6x minus 18. Add 18 to both sides. And you will get 36 equals 6x dividing by 6, x equals 6. I skipped a couple steps that I normally would have showed. Um, another way you can approach this problem, if you so choose, is you can actually divide by 3 in the very beginning, right? This times 3 divided by 3, the 3's go away. Divide by 3 on this side and you get 6 equals 2x minus 6, which will also lead you to the answer. Um, x equals 6. That'll be 2x equals 12, so on and so forth. Okay, when you have like terms on the opposite side, the step is slightly different. Basically, when you're done, in order to find x, uh, find out what our variable x is, you're going to need to have the variable on one side in one term, and then usually the numbers on the other side. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I, I want, these two want to be together, because they're both x terms. So I'm going to shift it to the other side, and the way I'm going to do that is by subtracting. So I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. These are going to cancel, and you'll get 5x minus 3x will give us 2x. I'm going to bring this 2 along for the ride. You can kind of switch the order there. Um, minus 6, because we can add in any order. No big deal. And now we have an equation that we know how to solve. 2x equals... negative eight, divide both sides by two to get um, x equals negative four. Fantastico. Okay, let's take a look. Now, when you see a problem with fractions like this, there's kind of two ways that you can react. You can get rid of the fractions, which is what I recommend, or you can deal with the fractions as they are. So I'm going to do it first the way that I'd recommend by getting rid of the fractions. You always multiply by the least common multiple of the denominators that are in the problem. Here we have 2 and 4. The least common multiple is 4. It's the first number in each list. So I'm going to multiply the left side by 4. I'm going to multiply the right side by 4, and it's got 2 levels of distribution. These are not supposed to be complicated math problems. Dividing by 2 is the same as taking half, right? Half of 4 is just 2x. 4 times 1 is plus 4 equals 1 quarter of 4 is just 1x. And that's that. 4 times minus 6 is negative 24. So now we can combine like terms. Not quite. I have to move the x term over in order to combine. 2 minus 1 gives me 1x plus 4 equals negative 24. Subtracting 4 will give us x equals negative 28. What a fantastic answer that is. Super. Hope I didn't make any mistakes. 2x plus 4. Yeah, let me double check my work here. 1, negative 24, Looking good to me. Great. Let's keep cruising. Okay, you do these three on your own. Give them a shot. Um, and then check your answers when you're done. I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, 
problem. I want to keep my, I want to try and keep my variable term positive. So rather than subtract two from both sides, I'm going to um, add eight m to both sides. You'll get 10 m minus 13 is equal to 27. Add 13, put that on the other side. 10 m is equal to 40, m equals four, okay? 10 times what number is 40? Well, that's four. We're gonna distribute. Six times three gives us 18a plus six minus 30. Distributing here is 6a minus, excuse me, 6a minus three times four is 12. Okay, um, let's simplify the left and the right first. So I'm gonna write this as 18a, uh, positive six minus 30 gives us negative 24. Here I have six a minus 12. Let's go ahead and get these two a terms together on the left-hand side, which means I'm gonna take the one on the right and do the opposite of its sign. Minus six, which will give us 12a minus 24 equals negative 12, because those are gonna cancel. Add 24, add 24, and you will get come over here, 12a equals 12, and a equals 1. If you plug in 1 at the very beginning, that is 3 times 1 is 4, or 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, um, times 6 is 24, 24 minus 30 is negative 6, and then over here, 2 minus four is negative two times three is also negative six. So we know that that's our solution. And fraction time. We need the LCM of, five and four, which is, I'll let you figure that out, but it's 20. Um, 20, 20. Okay. Um, 20 divided by 5, so it's 20 over 5 simplifies to 4 over 1, and 4 times 2 is 8b. Uh, 20 over 4 simplifies to 5 over 1, and 5 times 3 is 15b, equals 3 times 20 is 60. Adding those two together, you'll get 23b equals 60. Dividing both sides by 23, and we'll get b equals 60 over 23. That cannot be simplified, because 23 is a prime number. Fantastic. I am excited. Okay, so how would we do this if we didn't do that number trick? I know I didn't actually do this in class, but this will be interesting. Uh, 2b over five plus 3b over four equals three. Let's do that again. 2b over 5 plus 3b over 4 equals 3. We want to solve this equation. We know the answer is 60 over 23. Um, I want to do it a different way. And the other way that you can do it is find that LCM, which we know is 20, okay? And rewrite the fractions so that they are over 20 instead. And the way that we do that is by changing the denominators. What we do to the top, we do to the bottom. So really what we're doing we want to make this something over 20. So what we're going to do is do this 2b over 5. I'm going to multiply this by 4 over 4. And the reason I chose 4 over 4 is it'll give me this denominator 20. Okay. And then we're going to add that to 3b over 4. I'm going to multiply this one by 5 over 5, which equals now, I don't need to multiply the other side by anything because all I've done is taken this term and multiplied by a clever form of 1 and this fraction multiplied by 1. Anything times 1 is itself, so we're just creating an equivalent fraction and you'll get 8b over 20 plus 15b over 20 is equal to 3. Now we can add those together and you'll get 23b over 20 equals three, multiply both sides by 20 to get 20 over 20 cancels, 23b equals 60, 
B equals 60 over 23. Both methods work to give you the correct answer. Use whichever one you would like. I want to caution you. Um, when you bring in the idea that you can have a starting equation with x on one side and x on the other side, you, bring, you open yourself up to two potential problems. So if you want to discover these problems on your own, pause the video and try solving this on your own. If you'd like me to just do it, I'm going to do it. So here we go. Distributing the 5, this will end up being 7x. 5 times x gives us plus 5x. 5 times min uh, minus 1 is negative 5. Equal sign comes down. Minus 5 plus 12x. I'm just going to keep rolling here. 7 plus 5, those are like terms, 2x terms. 7 plus 5 is 12x minus 5 equals negative 5 plus 12x. You're probably saying this looks suspicious, Mr. Slagle. All right, I want to get these two x terms together, so I'm going to subtract 12x, and I'm being purposefully kind of, what's the word, uh, loopy here. I recognize that these are the same. You're ruining, this. You're ruining the experience, Slagle. Okay, uh, those add to zero, these add to zero, and I get this statement, five equals five. Well, I better get those fives together. I'll add five to both sides. Uh, zero equals zero. Yes, it does. Negative five equals five. Yes, it does. Okay, when you find yourself getting a true statement, what's the solution? What is the number that makes this equation true? And the answer, is all real numbers. All real numbers make the equation true. If you don't believe me, pick any number and plug it in right here, and it will make the equation true. Okay, um, let's do a quick check. Well, you're not gonna believe me. You try it on your own, right? Any number is gonna make that true. Um, similar situation over here, except what you end up with is 6y minus 30 equals 20 plus 6y. Let's get those y's together. Subtract 6y, subtract 6y, and you get negative 30 equals 20. Gross. This is a false statement. So what is your answer? Remember, we're trying to find the solution. And it turns out, because we have a false statement, there is no solution. There is no real number that makes this equation true. It is not possible under any circumstance for the left side to be equal to the right side. And it is possible that every circumstance makes those things true because they are the same mathematically. All right, guys, that's it for this lesson. I really appreciate your guys' hard work, throw this on the website. Feel free to watch or rewatch anytime. Have a fantastic day.